Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Congratulations to all of you on your nominations. Um, let me start with you, Mr. Heffern. Uh, in your opening statement, uh, you said that President Obama has recognized and deplored the horrific events that took place in the waning days of the Ottoman Empire. And he went on to say uh, and noted that he, I assume that was the president, publicly called the massacre of 1.5 million Armenians at the time one of the worst atrocities of the 20th century. I, I welcome that statement, but I'd like to explore it a little bit more with you. Do you uh, agree that there were mass killings ethnic cleansing and forced deportations of over one and a half million Armenians during the period that the Ottoman Empire existed? Uh, Senator, yes, as, uh, as the President has said, the, 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 mur the, mass the massacres and the, uh, the, the, the forced deportations uh, leading to the deaths of uh, 1.5 million Armenians is uh, acknowledged and recognized and deplored by President Obama, and yes, sir, uh, I, I believe it as well. Okay. And that those were conducted at the time by the Ottoman Empire, is that true? Those were conducted at the time, of the, at, in the final days of the Ottoman Empire, yes, sir. Now, we as a country, and I assume this administration, recognizes the Turkish Republic as a successor state to the Ottoman Empire, is that true? Senator, I assume that's true. I don't know that that's true. I assume that's true. I mean, it has to be true. So yes, sir, I, I, I'm, I'm going to just take that as true, but I, don't, I have to say I don't know that, specific, that specifically. Let me ask you this. Article 2 of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, of which the United States has both signed and ratified, states in the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. As such, A, killing members of the group, B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, uh, and it goes on to other elements. Those are uh, a convention from which we, the United States, have signed. Now, if those are, are the convention by which the United States is willing to be a signatory to, would not the facts that you acknowledge in your opening statement during the period of 1915 to 1923 and that in furtherance of the answers to my questions meet the definition of Article Two? Senator, you have accurately described Article Two, the definition of genocide in the convention, so yes to that part of the question. Uh, the, and yes to the, the facts that were in my statement and that you've, and that you've repeated. Uh, but the characterization uh, of those events, Senator, is a, is a policy decision that, uh, that is made by the President of the United States, and that policy is enunciated in his April 24th uh, Remembrance Day statement. Are you aware of uh, cables that exist from former Ambassador Henry Morgenthau uh, who was the ambassador, uh, U.S. ambassador to Turkey uh, from 1913 to 1916, from the U.S. Council in Aleppo, from the U.S. Council in Harput, from uh, uh, Ambassador Morgenthau, who was succeeded by Abraham Elkus, who served as ambassador from 1916 to 17. Have, have you had an opportunity to read any of those? Uh, Senator, yes, I've seen the, uh, the compilation uh, that Mr. Sar Saravian has, has put together uh, of documents from the time. So, yes, sir, I have and, seen a, a large number of them. You have no reason to dispute what those uh, 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 dispatches were. Those, th those Foreign Service officers at the time, uh, sir, reported uh, what they saw and how they perceived events at the time. Yes, sir. Okay. I... Uh, I just want to say, Madam Chair, uh, this is a difficult set of circumstances, and I appreciate your answers. Uh, this is a, a inartful dance that we do. We have a State Department whose history full of dispatches cites the atrocities committed during this period of time. We have a convention from which we sign on to as a signatory that clearly defines these acts as genocide. We have a historical knowledge of the facts which we accept 
that would amount to genocide, but we are unwilling to reference it as genocide. And if we cannot accept the past, we cannot move forward. And so I find it very difficult to be sending diplomats of the United States to a country in which they will go, and I hope you will go, as some of your predecessors have, to a uh, genocide commemoration, uh, and yet never be able to use the words genocide. It is much more than a question of uh, a word. It is everything that, that signifies our commitment to saying never again. And yet we can't even acknowledge this fact, and we put diplomats in a position that I think is uh, totally untenable. But I appreciate your straightforward answers to my questions, and uh, I, I have one other set of questions uh, as it relates to you, Mr. Wallers, and that is, again, I, I caught the tail end of my colleagues' questions here, so I hope this is not redundant, but this whole issue of uh, uh, the name uh, of Macedonia, it's more than a name. Uh, there is historical realities here. There is concern of irredentism. Uh, and there is, uh, in my mind, a concern when one of the first acts of the new prime minister is to uh, erect a 72-foot high bronze statue of Alexander the Great in the central square of the city of Skopje, and uh, a monument challenging Alexander's Hellenic roots, uh, costing $13 million in a country with 32% unemployment, of teaching children of what is Greater Macedonia, of making claims that are Greater Macedonia when we know that 52% of that land mass is in Greece. This is more than a, some people say, why are they fighting over a name? This has real significant consequences. Do you go into this assignment uh, fully appreciating that? Yes, Senator, I believe I do. You're correct, completely correct in saying this is more than just a name. This is an issue of identity. Um, and we have uh, worked in the past and have confirmed that I would continue to do so with the Macedonian authorities, as we have also in, in Athens with our embassy there, to impress upon both sides the need to move forward on this issue uh, with great uh, sense of compromise, a great sense of respect for each other's uh, histories and traditions, a sense of willing to make the painful compromises that are necessary to resolve this very uh, delicate issue. As you said, it's an issue which is very emotional for both sides. Uh, we want to make sure also, and I would do so if confirmed, that neither side is engaging in any kind of uh, provocative or inflammatory rhetoric or actions, which can only make the process even more difficult. It's, it's hard enough as it is, otherwise, as I said earlier, we would have resolved this long ago. But it requires real leadership on both sides to move forward on this very difficult Well, issue. I know that the previous government had rejected UN-offered names that described solely fire and so sovereign territory. Such names included Northern Macedonia, Upper Macedonia, which Greece accepted. So uh, I, I always worry, uh, you know, when we deal with some issues in the world where we talk about it's an emotional issue, sometimes that characterizes it in a way that seems that it is irrational. I, you know, uh, <coughs> Senator Rubio and I sit on this committee, have a very strong view on U.S.-Cuba policy. Some people like to describe that as emotional. Uh, we have a very uh, significant view as to what U.S. foreign policy should be. In this case, I hope when we subscribe the words emotional to it, it is not trivializing that for certainly both of these countries, but certainly the Greece. This is far more than a name. This is questions of territory, identity, uh, as well as a concern of those who have aspirations of getting territory that is clearly within uh, the, the Hellenic Republic, uh, possibly being you know, desired and sought after by its neighbor. Well, I agree completely, Senator. I mean, emotionalism is not irrationalism. I didn't mean to equate those. Um, if confirmed, I would work very closely with the Macedonian authorities, as I said, to make sure there are no uh, tinges or, or movements of irredentism. I think we're trying to make sure that does not happen. I think the policy of the Macedonian government has been that they do not have any irredentist claims on Greece. But it, should there be anything like that, I would ask you and certainly request that you would let me know so we can work with the authorities to make sure that it does not continue. That's, there's no place for that. That will only make the issue more difficult. Oh, thank, you. thank you, Madam Chair, for your courtesy.